Fallout New Vegas, or as I like to call it, Fallout 3 with blackjack and hookers is the rootinest, tootinest, shootinest, cowboy bootinest game since God himself invented the wild, wild west. In New Vegas, you play as the postal postman who must overcome the dual obstacles of a crippling head injury and crippling gambling addiction to deliver the mail or die trying again. Developed by Bethesda Game Studios as friend of City and Entertainment, New Vegas is the third and final game in the Fallout trilogy. Brackets good. In fact, this game is so good it's almost like it was intentionally designed to slight me in my attempts to derive comedy from its story and design elements. I can't even say you play as Mr. New Vegas because he's already in the game and I love him. Bless your heart! Just like the rest of the trilogy, Bethesda had nothing to do with this one, except for the engine and the QA testing, meaning this game is less stable than a celebrity marriage. As a YouTuber, I know a thing or two about instability. Come on, Obsidian, how is a game built on the exact same engine as the last one somehow more unstable? But while your CPU fights for its life, you'll also be fighting for your life in a brutal war playing out one Call of Duty's match worth of soldiers at a time between furries and the IRS as they attempt to take control of Hoover Dam. This is depicted as a struggle of equally valid ideas, the balance of which can be tipped by a homicidal mailman with extensive brain damage. But despite the surprise brain piercing, you are still the most functional person in the state of Nevada. Let me explain. After a game that's central theme was about how decisions made before you were born eventually require your death for the salvation of mankind, New Vegas dares to ask, yo, what if the apocalypse was fucking ridiculous? To that end, the factions we will meet are similarly fucking ridiculous. Like the Kings, a gestalt consciousness where every member is pretending to be Elvis Presley, the Gunrunners, an anarcho-syndicalist arms dealer co-op, and the Great Cons, a biker gang that forgot to have bikes. Not that they'll need them, because in this game the entire state of Nevada is considered walking distance. Which is fine, since I have spurs that jingle jangle jingle and I am riding merrily the fuck along on this journey to deliver a platinum poker chip to Dr. House. Or at least I was until Chandler Bing shot me in the face. At least to keep you company on your journey, you'll have a selection of the hardest bangers ever put to silicone. Seriously, the music in this game slaps harder than a coked up chimpanzee. Instead of control effing the lyrics of every song ever written with the words nuclear in it, New Vegas has a mix of western ballads and big band crooners, a collection of music actually relevant to the setting. Then again, sometimes you'll get some stone cold bangers like Big Iron, but other times you get Johnny Guitar played 30 times in a row and you'll want to turn the Big Iron on yourself. Watch this. So please, assume the position as we delve fist first into the post-post-apocalyptic world of Fallout New Vegas. Before we're unleashed onto an unsuspecting world, we receive the standard protagonist briefing. There are three factions fighting for control of the Mojave, the New California Republic, dedicated to old world values like taxes and embezzlement, Caesar's Legion, dedicated to even older world values like slavery and gay orgies, and Old Man House, dedicated to keeping these fucking kids off his lawn. We are a mailman hired to deliver a platinum chip to the Strip, but now we are forced to watch as a fashion criminal commits mail fraud. You cons might kill a man without looking him in the eye, but not me. Ah oh, gee thanks, you're doing me a real big fucking favor here. Sorry kid, I guess no one told you your life was going to be this way. Fortunately, the only thing that bullet hit was the part of my brain that allowed me to feel empathy. Wake the fuck up, samurai. What's your name, son? I don't remember. Well, that's a stupid name. Let's get you diagnosed. I'm gonna say a statement, and you tell me if you agree with it or not. NFTs are a good investment. Strongly agree. Hmm, well that clinches it. You've definitely been shot in the head. Here's my old pit boy. Figured you could use it, seeing how brain damaged you are. It should keep you from dying immediately. Now if I could just get your insurance details. Um, I think they're the same as my name. Stumbling out of the doctor's house, we find ourselves on the streets of Good Springs. The cutest tutorial town since Megaton. However, unlike Megaton, people live here because there's water, something someone would actually want to live near instead of, you know, a nuclear bomb. But that doesn't make it any less dangerous since a K-pop group called the Powder Gangers is terrorizing the populace for daring to have Ringo as their favorite beetle. The Powder Gangers are former prisoners who took control of the area after the warden gave them unsupervised access to high explosives. Damn it, how could this have happened? What did the NCR have you guys in prison for anyway? Well, the station? Wait, what? I said tax evasion. Uh, you know what? I think I would feel more comfortable if they were slightly deconstructed. Confucius once said, before you embark on a journey of revenge, dig two graves. But I will be killing way more than just two people. Now that you've evicted the homeless from the Hood Springs, you can go wherever you want. As long as it's south. I mean, you could go north, straight to New Vegas, but if you do that, you will get your dick ripped off. Honestly, if this was our planned route, I think Benny might have done us a favor. Traveling south so as not to get our shit wrecked, we arrive at Prim, a real roller coaster of a town. Prim is under siege by the NCR because it's been occupied by more tax evaders. They're not doing much beyond standing there menacingly, but they will try to kill you if you get too close. They're trying to commit murder and accessory to loitering. We can also visit the Mojave Express office where our boss reminds us that we're still on the clock for that delivery and if they don't get it in 30 minutes or less, the chips are free. He also tells us we're a replacement for the original Courier 6 who walked off the job when he looked at the roster and saw I don't remember his next in line, ruining my weekend plans and giving us an express lobotomy. Before we can leave, we get contracted by the deputy to conduct interviews for the next town sheriff. He gives us a lead on a sheriff who's in jail. For a rural American sheriff, this wouldn't normally be a problem, but to get to him, I first had to kill all of his friends and for some reason he 
didn't want to talk to me after that. We can also ask the NCR to take over the town. Prim has fallen. Millions must pay their taxes. Shit, is that a robot wearing a cowboy hat? You're the new sheriff now. Try not to go Terminator on them. His first act is to fire the deputy. So you know, at least he's doing something right. Welcome to, uh, oh God. Welcome to a fucking Burning Man. Here we encounter members of Caesar's Legion having a uh, impromptu barbecue. If you ever feel useless, just look up the Google reviews for the Nipton Fire Department. Uh, I guess that's one way to take care of the K-pop problem. Why did you do this? I told a joke and they left me hanging. So I did the same to them. Oh no, yeah, I got it. Oh, well you didn't laugh, so. It's just that I've heard that one before. What the fuck? Oh shit, where did he go? Welcome to Novak, home of the fucking T-Rex from Pee-wee's Big Adventure, where it pulls double duty as a gift shop and sniper's nest. And inside the mouth of that dinosaur, watching over the town is a bundle of PTSD named Craig. My wife left me. Damn bro, I know it's hard. It's even harder since someone in this town sold her to Legion slavers. They took her in the middle of the night while I was on duty. Well shit, we should probably go rescue her then. My wife is dead. Are you sure about that? I'm sure. Don't ask me how I know, I just do. She's dead. Hold on, you're telling me you were on duty, but you know the Legion took her, and you know she's dead. Holy shit, did Boone kill his wife? The other half of the Dino Head timeshare is Manny Vargas, who knows where Chandler went, but won't tell us unless we serve an eviction notice to some ghouls living at the local mom and pop rocket factory. If you want to be a dick, you can evict them straight into the fucking ground. But it turns out they're a cult, so either way you're sending them to the afterlife. Now that we've run his incredibly inconvenient errands, Manny tells us they went towards New Vegas. This man is useless. Welcome to Boulder City, or at least what used to be Boulder City, just in case you thought the Legion had a monopoly on war crimes. It's now more bolder than city since the NCR flattened it during the first battle of Hoover Dam. Two NCR soldiers are being held hostage by pissed off Australians, and just like Pym, the NCR is too bitch made to call them collateral damage. They're even willing to let a complete stranger conduct baby's first hostage negotiation. But don't worry, I'm very good at on-the-job training, just like when I got that job as an airline pilot. This isn't how I saw this going. If you get us out of this, I'll tell you where Chandler is. I already know where he is because I played this game 30 fucking times. Give me the lighter or I turn this FBI hostage negotiation into an ATF hostage negotiation. Finally, after walking 130 miles across the desert, we arrive at the Vegas Strip. You're broke! You're fucking poor! Since I am a broke-ass bitch, I must now enroll in Hustlers University and develop my Sigma male grind set in the hopes of one day escaping Romanian prison. But until I can get the scratch, we're going to have to stay in Freeside, a crime-infested neighborhood where every street is that alley where Batman's parents got killed. But it's doing about as well as can be expected when the only rule of law are roving packs of Elvis impersonators. Honestly, this is one of the video games that manages to make a dangerous neighborhood actually feel dangerous. How the hell did Benny get across this wearing a fucking checkered suit? For some reason, an entire casino has managed to stay in business here. To escape from crippling poverty, I just need to leverage my superior brain power to go fucking broke apparently. But don't worry, just like the actual hood, there's plenty of work available for a trigger-happy psychopath who believes nobody besides himself is real. The most lucrative of that work being squeezing caps out of deadbeats. Now I could return this money to its rightful owner. Or, you know, not. Welcome to the strip. Just like the actual Vegas, there's fuck all to do here if you're a recovering gambling addict. Except relapse. Or we could meet the enigmatic Dr. House. His casino isn't even open, but he somehow managed to convert his pre-war money into bottle caps. He was able to save Vegas from the bombs and now he wants to rebuild civilization from the vice up. The apocalypse didn't even get all the billionaires. What even was the point of nuclear Armageddon if the 1% was just gonna buy their way out of it? I'm sure you have questions. Yeah, how the hell was I supposed to deliver the platinum chip in the first place if you weren't gonna let me on the strip? Enough. Go and get the platinum chip. And this time, try not to get shot in the head so much. Benny is the leader of the chairman, the tribe that runs the Tops Casino, and now I just want to talk to him. What in the goddamn? How do you fuck up shooting someone in the head? In my defense, I successfully shot you in the head. Start running. Benny has escaped. Luckily, Caesar has captured him in 30 seconds. So now we need to go to the fort to visit him. We arrive at Little Caesar's Pizza Compound, where we find a non-zero amount of slave and child labor. The children yearn for the glory of Rome. But all that slavery seems to be paying dividends because Benny has been delivered to us in 30 minutes or less. We get a chance to speak with Little Caesar himself, who's living out the ultimate male fantasy by resurrecting the Roman Empire. You've cut a bloody swath through the Mojave. Game recognizes game. Be honest, Courier. How often do you think about the Roman Empire? I'm pretty sure everybody that lived in it had lead poisoning. We caught Benny trying to enter the shed in the back of the camp. I want you to take this chip and destroy whatever you find down there. Or don't. It's not like I'm gonna check or anything. But you never know when a robot army will come in handy, so I decided to keep it as a surprise tool that will help us later. Benny wants you to use Yes Man to action his insane plan to turn New Vegas 
Vegas into some sort of anarcho-totalitarian state where lawlessness will be enforced by an army of robots. That has to be the worst idea I've ever heard. Trust me, man. This country in the desert with no natural resources except the profligate soldiers from an occupying major power and extreme tribalism will be just fine on its own. My brother in Christ, you are describing Afghanistan. Hey man, sounds like a swing in place. You are the stupidest person I've ever met in my entire life. I'm glad no one told you it was going to be this way. You can talk to Caesar about his political goals, but I've had more interesting philosophical discussions in Modern Warfare 2 lobbies. But I can't blame him for that, since my dude is getting dunked on by his own brain. What I can blame him for is the sheer lack of respect. Mark my words, you piece of shit. This is the last time you will ever refuse to perform an order I have given you. Too bad. I've murdered my way here and he still has the balls to pull this shtick with me. Take note, class. This is what happens when game doesn't recognize game. With the Platinum Chip now irrelevant and Benny no longer collecting his friend's residuals, we must choose which faction to support for control over Hoover Dam. The one who likes Atlas shrugged unironically, the IRS or austerity incels. If we join the Las Vegas Raiders, we get to end Dr. House's life, which has been unnaturally extended by modern medicine, as well as use modern medicine to unnaturally extend Caesar's life. But this caused me to lose all respect for him, since any real man would have removed a brain tumor with the same express brain surgery we had. If we decide to support Dr. House in his toxic work environment, we must go to graduate school to get our master's in organizational change and management in the hopes that my IRA will gain value in the post-apocalypse. But I'm not interested in a middle management position, so I had to politely turn him down. Yeah, so thank you for the opportunity, but my time at this company has run its course. I'm afraid I'm going to have to The Last of Us Part 2 you. If we choose to render under the IRS, we must complete a series of quests designed to make you wonder where the hell your tax dollars are going in the first place. The answer being corruption and the exquisite drip. I unironically love the NCR. There are very few organizations that would tolerate the shenanigans I'm going to get up to, like letting their president get JFK'd by being AFK. You're not going to get that dedication and not giving a fuck from Caesar. However, I also have no intention of paying my taxes, so I'm going to go for option number four, Afghanistan. Sun Tzu once said, you can get a lot more done with a kind word and a gun than you can with a kind word alone. So I'm going to recruit the faction with the biggest guns, the boomers. Are you the boomer I'm supposed to meet? Who are you calling a boomer? I'm here for the meetup to Storm Area 51. I think you might have gone to the wrong base. After Naruto running through concentrated artillery fire, we arrive at Nellis Air Force Base, home of the boomers, dedicated to old world values like the Second Amendment. And that's it. We already have fire control over the entirety of New Vegas. But do you know what would be the bee's knees, dearie? Long range strategic bombing capabilities. Uh, why do you need that? No reason, dearie. I really hope I'm not creating a problem I won't be able to solve later. But with the boomers placated with nuclear are capable bombers, we can finally turn our attention to a more serious matter. Three dudes got mugged in Vegas. The NCR ambassador wants you to stop the violence against NCR citizens in Freeside. We've traced the attacks back to a man named Pacer. We need you to assassinate him, but this can't be traced back to us, so make sure to make it look like an industrial accident. Or maybe like he was killed by a jealous gay ex-lover. Yo, King, can you stop the violence in Freeside? You got it, King. Thanks, King. The Omertas are a tribe that runs the Gamora Casino on the Strip. For some reason, when House was planning the Strip, he decided this tribe should be Italian. And now they're planning to attack the Strip and kill everyone. So that decision really bit him in the ass. But as Sun Tzu once said, the only thing that can stop a bad man with a gun is a worse man with a gun. Welcome to Flavortown, run by the White Glove Society. Unlike the rest of the fucked political compass that is the New Vegas Strip, these guys just want a grill. Unfortunately, their choice cut of meat is from the only animal that bitches about getting eaten. Honestly, I'm not even sure how I solved this one. I think I accidentally skipped a step or something, but the quest was marked as complete, so I guess that's handled? With the White Glove Society's cannibalism probably managed, we must now travel back down the road north of Good Springs and experience Australia. I can't believe anyone would choose to live here. Oh right, they didn't. The cons are basically a gang of Australians, but living in post-apocalyptic Nevada, they're no longer kept in check by hostile wildlife. To solidify our control over the area, we need to serve them with an eviction notice. The Khans are the strongest faction in the Mojave, and Kaisar sees glory for us. I fought stronger hospice patients. I'd say you need to touch grass, but you'd probably get cut on the sharp edges. With the Khans now abandoning the Mojave in search of some grass, we can turn our attention to the Mojave chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel. Every faction wants you to destroy the Brotherhood of Steel, but I know from the last game they're cool guys, so there's no way. I need you to find three lost patrols. Trolls. I need you to find three scouts. Hey, the Elder's got you running errands, does he? I can get rid of him if you want. All you need to do is find three members of his staff. To I need you to repair the water filter. I need you to find three components. Are you finished with those errands? No, I'm not finished with those errands, and I never will be. Fortunately for us, one of the Brotherhood's favorite things to hoard is ammonium nitrate. Fuck these guys. Fuck this base. Fuck Veronica for getting mad about this. The NCR president is in town to make a speech, and we need to keep him alive. Or, you know, not. It's not like anyone's gonna care. Oh, you're mad, aren't you? It's okay, I'll just reload the save. Again. And again. Until I get it right. I thought working for the Botherhood of Steel was tedious, but President Kimball is harder to keep alive than an anti-vaxxer's newborn. Sending all my thoughts and prayers to keep this man alive. 
Looks like my work here is done. Unlike the end of Fallout 3, where you can just keep going after you finish the game and persist in the doomed world you've created, New Vegas actually fucking ends. That's it. Game's over. Go home. So before we can determine the fate of the Mojave in a pitch battle between three armies, it's time to get sidetracked. Fallout New Vegas is some of the best additional content ever created for a game. But when they started planning it, Obsidian straight up said, next one's a horror game. In Dead Money, we learn the real strength isn't in holding on, but in letting go. To your organs, the courier is spirited away to Walt Disney World Sierra Madre, a casino designed and built by Hidetaka Miyazaki. Because Obsidian cranked up the difficulty so high I briefly thought I was playing fucking Dark Souls. Here, killing enemies is more of a suggestion. The air is more toxic than a Tumblr convention sponsored by Taco Bell, and even the radios will kill you, but I guess not the one you wear on your wrist. We have been kidnapped by former Brotherhood of Steel elder Elijah, except he's become the dang Joker and has strapped a bomb collar to your neck, as well as several others, so he can force you not to kill each other long enough to Ocean's Eleven the casino. But first, we need to put together a crew, like a monster with dissociative identity disorder, when we find Dog he's having a bit of a dissociative episode. As a mailman, I'm a bit worried, but through the power of, I guess, psychology, we are able to bring out a persona that can speak in complete sentences. You're trying to do a heist? Yes. No. Hey, shit ass. Yes, sir, Mr. Mailman. Glory to the Mojave Express. Our next recruit is Dean Domino, a ghoul singer. You just sat down on a landmine. Then it would have gone off. Landmines explode on contact, not release. Suppose I would have killed you anyway. Then both our collars would explode, idiot. Are you scared? Are you suicidal? Only in the morning. And finally, we need to recruit Christine, a woman who doesn't talk. Trust me, for a character in one of these DLCs, it's a fucking miracle. You'll see what I mean. If we want to escape from Orlando, Florida, we must first activate the Walt Disney World Casino and get gassed again. What, do they let Todd write this one? Get your luck up, Samurai. We have a casino to rob. Now that we've infiltrated the casino, we can unlock the secrets of the vault in the basement. Unfortunately, to proceed, we must first conduct a group therapy session slash murder our other team members. Ugh. Mailman, dog eat mailman. Hey, shit ass. Yes, sir, Mr. Mailman. Glory to DSM-5. Dean, I don't really know how to do this quest without killing you, so... Christine, you shouldn't do revenge on Elijah, because I want to do my own revenge. Fine. Wait, you could talk this whole time? No. Dean put me in the auto dock to change my voice to that of Walt Disney's favorite e-girl. Good, then you can open the vault with this password I found on this ancient meme. Amogus. Hey, Elijah, the job's done. You can come out now. I don't think so. I can't trigger your collar from here. Best if I just wait for you to starve to death. Yo, dude, there's like nothing in here. What? Yeah, it's like some drugs from Disney's addicted girlfriend, a couple of laser rifles, a few stacks of cash, and about 50 anime boxes. Body pillows. I'll be right down. If you want, you can try to steal the gold in the vault, but if you do, you'll have to slowly waddle out of the vault overburdened with gold while the timer on your collar counts down. That's because the theme of this DLC is about how the real treasure is the friendships you made along the way. It's not about holding on, it's about letting go so you can begin again. You bet your ass I stole that fucking gold. In Honest Hearts, the courier decides to take a much needed break from the shooting war over the dam and take a nice easy caravan contract to go on a search for the last people in America with any fucking manners, the Mormons. Unfortunately, everyone else on the caravan is just one day from retirement. Hey guys, it's me, Big Beak Entertainment, and on this episode of Columbo, we'll be bumbling around Zion National Park as we attempt to solve the murder of our co-workers. This eventually leads us to the Dead Horses Tribe, run by a mummy named Josh. We seem to have found ourselves in a different war, this time between the White Leg Tribe and the Dead Horses tribe. Fortunately, as has been previously established, war never changes, so I am a professional. We meet Daniel, a New Testament Mormon living among a tribe called the Sorrows, who believes in turning the other cheek. The Bible preaches about forgiveness. Tell Josh if he wants a war, he'll have to do it without the Sorrows. Daniel, there's like three passages in this thing with instructions for committing genocide. Daniel asked you to talk me out of committing genocide, did he? Daniel is a good man, but I follow the Lord and his holy scripture. Don't start no shit, won't be no shit. The more you fuck around, the more you're gonna find out. Hold on there, Josh. I know we just killed literally everyone to get here, and you just executed those two guys in cold blood, but this one, this one goes too far. Those two random followers, obviously they had it coming, but if you kill the one guy that actually probably deserves it, you're never gonna forgive yourself. You've saved my soul. Thank you. Of the four DLCs, Old World Blues feels the most different. It's certainly the campiest, after the relentless horror we experienced in Dead Money, and the unending pain of having to talk to Mormons in Honest Heart. It's time to unwind with a lighter story in which we're subjected to a nice, relaxing lobotomy. If I had a nickel for every time a Fallout DLC removed my brain, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's Welcome to Big Mountain, a land out of an early Star Trek episode. If the multiple 30-minute conversations I had with the TV is anything to go by, this is clearly the DLC where the writer finally got his Adderall prescription filled. For the second time in two games, we've been subjected to brain robbery. Our heart and spine have similarly been relocated for their own protection, while our kidneys have already been sold on the Iranian kidney market. Now we must travel across suburbia to find our brain while being kept alive exclusively by Big Mountain's 5G network. If we want it back, we'll have to travel to Dr. Morbius's evil McMansion. But before you can do that, you need to talk to the Think Tank. 
for 30 minutes. I thought I was actually going to die of starvation. Just because you can write all the dialogue you want doesn't mean I want you to. Now that the think tank has lobotomized all of Big Mountain, they want to escape and lobotomize the rest of the world. The only thing standing in their way is the evil Dr. Morbius, whose anti-lobotomy stance is unconscionable for some reason. After running some more fucking errands for the think tank, we meet Dr. Morbius, and he's not what I expected. By which I mean I did not expect another 20-minute conversation with a deranged smart TV. All of Big Mountain is an elaborately crafted prison to keep the think tank locked up and engaged in foiling Mobius' schemes like a fucking Saturday morning cartoon villain. It turns out, he's not evil. He'd just rather torment his friends for eternity. You're free to go at any time, but you should make up your mind about your brain. And he's here tonight! So, come crawling back, did you? Why the fuck do you sound like Stewie from Family Guy? I challenge you to a debate. No. Well then, I'm not going with you. I've got two thumbs that say you don't have a choice. However, if you complete Old World Blues, you are subjected to another 15 minutes of fucking dialogue in which you learn the post-game events for every character, location, and household appliance in the entire DLC. I would have let my brain stay in the jar if I knew this is what it would be subjected to. When developing the final DLC, Obsidian Quantum tunneled into the future, looked me personally straight in the eyes and said, oh, you thought those guys never shut up? Hey guys, it's me, Big Bear Grills, and on this episode of Man vs. Wild, we're going to be trekking through the divide, braving the lost souls who refuse to drink their own urine in the hopes of meeting up with our former co-worker, Ulysses, a character who was cut from the base game because he had so much dialogue it wouldn't fit on the disc. Since walking off the platinum chip delivery job and screwing over my weekend plans, Ulysses has been wandering the wasteland just one step ahead of me the entire time, somehow still causing problems and ruining even more weekend plans. Now we've tracked him here, to a big hole he's filled with his scattered ASMR recordings. For real, my man's hitting those consonants like they fucked his wife. It turns out he's upset, because unlike him, I actually did my job and delivered the mail. It just so happened that the mail was evil, and set off the many nuclear warheads stored in the Divide. So now, we must enter the Divide and set off the rest of them by hand. This time when I deliver the mail, it's going to stay delivered. Stop me if you've heard this one before. Two mailmen walk into a missile silo. Well, courier, you found me. Two couriers, the bull and the bear, meeting at the Divide. Why are you talking like fucking Dracula? I challenge you to a debate. You claim to politics, yet I phone Venezuela bottom text. Yes, sir, courier six. Glory to whichever country I hated 10 seconds ago. At least if you talk about of nuking the world again, he's nice enough to give you some advice on how to take out Legate Linnaeus at the second battle of Hoover Dam. Oh fuck, I forgot about the dam. Now that we've completed what's basically the real ending of the game, it's time to resolve the plot. Because we've already made all the decisions we can before this point, the second battle of Hoover Dam is more of a formality. There's only one way this ends, and that's with me formally declaring the independent emirate of New Vegas. I have no long-term vision or strategy, but I do have something the other factions don't. Homicidal tendencies. The voices in my head give great Great advice. I'm sure they can help me run a country. Tonight, the role of the final boss will be played by Legate Linnaeus. He's big, he's strong, he's fast, but he's also not the main character, and he knows it. So it's not hard to talk him into just fucking off. At last, we meet on the field of battle. What exactly do you think is about to happen? I just killed literally everyone to get here. Get the fuck out of my face. Yes, sir, Mr. Mailman. Glory to Afghanistan. What in the ever-loving fuck is going on here? Mr. General, I'm never paying taxes again. Congratulations, dipshit, you just invented the Sovereign Citizens Movement. That would imply I believe other people shouldn't pay taxes. Fallout New Vegas feels a lot more linear than the Bethesda Fallouts. You really can't blast through the story, you have to be a lot more thoughtful about how you approach it. It has an extremely tight script and mission structure, but to get that it sacrifices the go-anywhere exploration of Fallout 3. That is one of the biggest negatives of this game compared to Fallout 3. You're tightly constrained in where you can go, either by the leveling and power system, or by physical barriers. I joked earlier that New Vegas is the final game in the Fallout trilogy. And while you should never take anything I say seriously, I was only half joking when I said that. This is a direct sequel to Fallout 2, much more than Fallout 3 even. But where Fallout 1 was post-apocalyptic and Fallout 2 was post-post-apocalyptic, Fallout New Vegas is almost post-post-post-apocalyptic. There's barely any apocalypse left for the rest of us. I mean, they've built a fucking monorail. That's about as far from the apocalypse as you can get. There's a few fucked places, but civilization has broadly reasserted itself, and the plot in New Vegas revolves around those visions of civilization competing with each other like they had in the old world. I would I would even go so far as to say that New Vegas is pre-apocalyptic. The entire game, you can feel the war between the NCR and the Legion about to drop on you like a fucking hammer. There's a visible anxiety about what's going to happen. And if the destruction of a monorail isn't the harbinger of the next apocalypse, I don't know what is. There was this deathly optimism that a new society could be built that actually takes lessons away from the horrors of the apocalypse, but here we are about to do it all again. And that's why the DLC is required reading. Lonesome Road is not optional content. It's the apotheosis of the theme of the entire franchise. Ulysses' last words live rent free in my head. If war doesn't change, men must change. Yep, that's it. That's the ending. Ladies and gentlemen, we got them. Mission accomplished. So Todd, why is there a Fallout 4?
Next game is going to be Fallout 4. I know that I've already done that, but that video is bad and nobody watched it, so I'm going to try again. Also, I'll take any excuse I can to play Fallout 4. It's my favorite Fallout game and I will never be able to articulate why. Also, since I was somehow able to manifest a remaster of Fallout 3, maybe we can get a new Vegas remaster? Please? Please, this is the most unstable game I've ever played. Also, Matthew Perry died while I was making this. Genuinely rest in peace to a real one. My dude loved Fallout 3 so much he fucked up his hand playing it and had to go to the hospital for cortisone injections. And then he somehow managed to translate that into getting cast as one of the most iconic video game characters of all time. 